This is video podcast 12 from learningradiology.com, Three Ways to Slice Pie, Part 1. Hello, I'm William Herring from Albert Einstein Medical Center in Philadelphia. There are three diseases which share the acronym PIE. These diseases do not have a common etiology or even similar imaging findings, but they're all known as PI. The diseases are pulmonary interstitial edema, pulmonary interstitial emphysema, and pulmonary infiltrates with eosinophilia. Today we're going to talk about pulmonary interstitial edema as the first slice of the pie. There are two major imaging patterns for congestive heart failure. There is pulmonary interstitial edema which generally occurs when the left atrial pressure is around 20 millimeters of mercury. And then as the fluid pours out of the interstitium into the alveoli of the lung, usually at a left atrial pressure of greater than 25 millimeters of mercury, there is pulmonary alveolar edema, which is frequently just referred to as pulmonary edema. We're going to talk about pulmonary interstitial edema and there are four major imaging findings for pulmonary interstitial edema. One, there's thickening of the interlobular septi, curly B lines. Two, there is peribronchial cuffing. The wall of the bronchus becomes thicker as it contains more fluid. Three, there is thickening of the fissures due to fluid in either the subpleural space in continuity with the interlobular septi or fluid between the layers of visceral pleura. And four, there are pleural effusions. This is an overview of a patient with pulmonary interstitial edema. As we look at a close-up view, we can see that there are curly lines, there is a laminar effusion, and we'll get to some of these findings in a moment. Curly B lines are distended interlobular septi. They are usually found at the basis. They are short lines. They're only about one or two centimeters in length. They are perpendicular to the pleural surface. They frequently touch the pleural surface. Therefore, they're horizontal in direction. These are curly B lines. You see they are short white lines. They are perpendicular to the lateral chest wall, the pleural surface and they are at the lung base. Curly A and C lines. A lines are connective tissue around or near the bronchoarterial bundle which becomes distended and therefore visible. They are located near the hilum. They tend to run obliquely and they're much longer than curly B lines. There is some question as to whether curly C lines actually exist. An overlapping network of curly A lines will produce a picture very similar to this in patients with pulmonary interstitial edema. You can see that there is a fine reticular lacy pattern of increased interstitial markings. Peribronchial cuffing occurs when interstitial fluid accumulates around the bronchus leading to thickening of the bronchial wall. When these thickened walls are seen on end, they appear like little donuts. Normally the bronchial wall is extremely thin and is usually not seen well on a chest radiograph, but when the wall becomes thicker, then they appear in the middle third of the lung as these tiny circles. Now they don't have to be perfectly round, but they look like you see in this photo of the red arrows pointing to the lucent centers with a white rim around them that represents peribronchial cuffing. Fluid in the fissures collects in the subpleural space usually which is between the visceral pleura and the lung parenchyma. It could also collect between the layers of visceral pleura. Normally the fissure will be the thickness of a line that you could draw with a sharpened pencil and you can see the fissures in a normal individual's chest radiograph. However, when fluid collects in the fissure, the fissure becomes much thicker than the line that you can draw with the 
point of a sharpened pencil and you can see this fluid in the major fissure, the minor fissure, accessory fissures, the azagous fissure, any fissure. This is an example of fluid in the fissures. The red arrow is pointing to fluid in the minor fissure, the blue arrow to fluid in the major fissure. These are thicker than the point of a sharpened pencil. And this is an example of the same individual before fluid accumulates in the fissures where you, they are visible but very thin and then after the fluid accumulates where the fissures are much thicker. Pleural effusions occur commonly with congestive heart failure. Laminar effusions are effusions that collect within and beneath the visceral pleura in the loose connective tissue between the lung and the pleura. This is the same location in which pseudotumors or vanishing tumors collect in some patients with congestive heart failure. This is an example of a laminar effusion. Normally the air in the lung extends to the interior portion of each rib, but in this patient the white arrows are pointing to a white edge which represents the laminar effusion, which is shown here by the double black arrowhead. That's the thickness of the effusion that separates the air in the lung from the interior of the ribs. Just a few words about pulmonary alveolar edema, usually just referred to as pulmonary edema. When the fluid in the interstitium spills out into the alveoli, it produces fluffy, indistinct, confluent opacities in the lung which look quite different from those of pulmonary interstitial edema. There is a tendency for pulmonary edema, especially as it relates to congestive heart failure, to spare the outermost portion of the lung, though this is not always true. So this is an example of pulmonary alveolar edema. To recap, the signs of pulmonary interstitial edema the reliable major findings are curly B lines and curly A lines, peribronchial cuffing, fluid in the fissures, and pleural effusions. Next time, we'll look at two more slices of PIE, PI, pulmonary interstitial emphysema, and pulmonary infiltrates with eosinophilia.